Okay, for this question, we will begin with Joanna. How will you address Alameda's currently underfunded pension liabilities? You all knew this was coming, right? <laughs> Joanna. budget every year. So there have been a number of forms that we've attended and there have been big numbers that have thrown out. So I want to make sure we put this into perspective first of all. 40 million, 80 million, 120 million. The issue is how much is our obligation each year? Last year it was 2.4 million and I'll remind everybody that the city has balanced our budget every year including 2007, 2008, 2008. Our housing market is coming back. Sales tax is coming back. So we are a city, we have to run like a business. You either have to increase income or you're gonna to have to decrease expenses. And my feeling is we have to do all of that. So as property taxes are going up, I have a number of friends that are in the real estate business. We now have multiple offers on houses. Houses are increasing in value, that's gonna increase our property tax. Hopefully as the economy comes forward, we're gonna be able to get more in the way of sales tax. So that's on the income side. We also have some other options that are less favorable and excessive property. There are some, many things that we can do that we have not explored yet. Okay, on the other side, cutting expenses. Efficiencies through the use of technology are ways that we might be able to get more. We talked earlier about public-private partnerships as a way of possibly reducing some of those expenses. We need to be careful how we did that and they covered that already. There are other ways as well, and if, and I, this is a huge if, if it gets to the point that we are not able to fund whatever the liabilities are, then 
we sit down with all of the stakeholders together and collaboratively work for the solution. I happen to know personally that nobody is interested in bankrupting the city. So I don't think bankruptcy is a word that we have to worry about right now. The concept of fiscal emergency is not available to us because it must be an unforeseen circumstance. We have protected our, projected our budget out for five years. We know in five years there's going to be a problem. Thank you. So the term unfunded liabilities, although I think the question was underfunded, but anyway, it applies when the city's financial obligations for employee pension and retiree health care costs exceeds the actuarial value of the city's assets to pay these obligations. And as had, has been noted by previous speakers, these obligations don't come due all at once, but we certainly have retirees out there. And speaking with our um, deputy city manager, Lisa Goldman, who uh, puts the budgets together, she you know, talks about part of the problem is, and anyone who has anything in the stock market and investments knows that since 2008, those investments have gone way down. They're coming back up, but um, that and, uh, you know, as has CalPERS, the, the state pension system that the, the city works with, and people are living longer. It's sort of the good news, bad news. Um, I'm happy to say that the city manager has been talking with our union leaders since this summer, uh, even though those contracts, public safety con contracts, don't come up for renewal until next summer. So they're already starting to explore some ideas. John Russo, our city manager, also appointed a pension and OPEP, that's the other than pension post-employee benefits like medical disability, uh, death benefits, to explore um, what can be done about this. And that task force will report to the city council on October 30th. But some of the options that are being considered by this task force, and it's very well represented, uh, very representative, is include negotiating with employees to pay more toward the employer PERS contribution, exploring a two-tier system where employees hired after a certain date are subject to a different retirement benefit formula, changing from using the single highest year of salary to an average of the um, highest three years, a combination of all of these. You may have read recently that Jerry Brown signed into law um, some pension reforms that will take effect for employees who are hired after January 1st, 2013. There are no silver bullets. It's going to take both sides working together, some tough decisions to be made. I feel that we can do this because in the end, what's good for the city is going to be good for our unions as well. Thank you.